Welcome to another one of Julian's Random Projects. You've joined me in my garage where you get to listen to the, uh, the beautiful hum of an air conditioner in the background. Uh, another project I'm working on tonight is my wife's scooter. It is a Bajaj 150, uh, 1977, but it's based off of a design from Vespa from the 1960s, like early 60s, called a VBA or VBB, I can't remember, Victor Bravo Bravo. Um, one had a bigger engine and a couple different mods. It's considered a wide-bodied scooter. Um, I'll try and splice in some photos of it, uh, like a walk around. Um, but I plan on upgrading the light for it today. Um, it is ridiculously dim and um, just unsafe. You can't see anything. I mean, you'd be better with one of those little LEDs from like, you know, a blinky LED for a bike or something would be a hundred times brighter than this piece of crap. Uh, but I guess if you're in like the middle of nowhere India and there's no street lights and there's no other uh, you know, sources of light, yeah, this might throw pretty good and your night vision would probably bounce out and be okay. Uh, I made an attempt to replace the brake lights with an LED. It's like my first foyer into this and I quickly discovered that uh, because this is an older bike, it doesn't have a battery. It has a generator and the generator is AC, it's not even DC. Um, right, so it's got a generator which produces enough electricity to spark the spark plug, run the headlights and tail lights, uh, but not turn signals, it doesn't even have turn signals, um, and it can also beep a horn. I don't know if you can see the horns in the shot. There's, you can't see the horn. <laughs> um, there's a little button that goes meep meep, you know, uh, it sounds like crap. Um, the horn kind of should give you a clue, I think, that, or it should have given me a clue that it was an AC generator because uh, th there's nothing really to the horn and yet I mean, meaning it's just a, it's like a speaker membrane and um, when it's energized it buzzes. Uh, if it was DC that membrane would just pop out you know for positive voltages and pop and suck in for negative voltages but it doesn't this thing actually like oscillates um, and it oscillates at the frequency that the uh, AC generator is going for the motor and producing a buzzing sound. Uh, I learned the hard way that it was an AC system by putting in a, a DC LED and of course it was super bright but what I didn't see and you would have seen on a scope is that for every time it you know swung up it also swung negative uh, the same uh, similar amount and all of those negatives ended up piling up at, you know or, or were strong enough to blow the little diodes that were in there if there were even protection diodes in that piece of crap LED light that I put in. Uh, it might have just been the the diode that is an LED or a light emitting diode, uh, keeping it working for the most part. But once I revved it, I think this thing, memory serves, I haven't probed it recently, so I can't remember, remember all that well. Um, and I'm not going to do it tonight because it's allowed, I'm in the garage. Um, <laughs> but I think it was swinging uh, from like, you know, like 6 volts up to, you know, 17 volts or something like that, AC. Uh, so it's like all over the place. Um, so anyways, uh, I'm planning on swapping out this light with another 6 volt light or maybe even a 12 volt light depending on how it works uh, that's maybe a little bit more modern and a bit, a bit brighter. Uh, so I've saved us all the time and removed some screws um, underneath here and here and that would gain us access to the inside of here. Pull this back. You've got ground and basically one lamp and the other lamp. I think it might be like low beam and high beam or something like that, but you know, something like that. Um, and then low beam and high beams in these types of bulbs. I'll show you guys some, show you the bulb up close, but a um, little click here pulls off. And this guy comes out. Um, I'm gonna show that up close. Pretty bright. It's actually pretty relatively new. It's got a hologram. Hmm. What does that tell us? Probably that <laughs> it was. Actually, I'll, I'll look up when holograms became popular for for labels. That'll give you an idea of when this thing was installed on here. Uh, so that leaves us with this really old-looking bulb um, sitting in here. It's one of those kind of like, like to twist in and turn.
uh, it might not be easy to see from there, but um, these are severely corroded. I mean, or not corroded, like too bad, but it's just like this patina, for lack of a better word. This is a layer of oxidation that's on these copper wire, the copper um, tabs that connect to the bulb as it goes in. The bulb looks okay, I guess it's a little oxidized. But again, even with this thing working as well as it is, that that's a lot of resistance to get past if this was even working at all for one of the other beams. And then the ground is this super tiny corroded piece of crap here. Not very well designed, but it, I mean, I guess it's okay for the 60s, so there's that. Um, this I'll come in later. I might show it in a video. Uh, cleaning this up with uh, some sandpaper or something just to get the context nice and um, get some new metal to uh, connect with. Yeah, so let me give you guys a close-up to this. Alright, so I have a, the original bulb. Uh, which is labeled as 6 volts, uh, 25 slash 25, whatever that means. Um, and if you look if you look closely at it, uh, let's see if we can zoom that in. If you look closely, if we look closely at it, it has like a little, um, like a bowl almost kind of in there, like a little dish, or a, it's like a little parabolic shaped um, piece in there, and that's your high beam. So it would the main element would glow inside that uh, reflector that we showed that I showed you earlier, and um, it would bounce off of that parabolic uh, shaped reflector, and you'd get your normal headlight. And then when you want to do a high beam, it would jump up to this um, higher one in the bulb, and it would reflect off of a different portion of uh, the of the reflector, and then in turn, you know, bouncing up higher up, up in the trees, um, if you will. Uh, so that's your basic headlight. Well, even, even ones that are in your car now are not far off from this. They've just got uh, better um, better materials for the filaments that are in here. A lot, a lot of technology has been put into light bulbs since this was made in the 70s, or at least retro, this might be a newer than 70s bulb, but retrofitted back to be the type uh, that would have been found in, in a, a scooter of that vintage. Um, so yeah, so let me show you what we're dealing with here. Hook up our bench power supply. We know it's six volts, but it ends up not mattering. <laughs> so let's put it somewhere close, a little bit more. Um, and I'll show you. That's it. Look at that. Look at it. Don't stare right at it. Okay. You could burn your retina. Let's see about the other one. Oops. Oh yeah, watch out! So many, so many lumens coming off this thing. Yeah, so if you look, it's pulling about two amps. It's brought the voltage down to two and a half volts, and it's bringing this little power supply to its knees. Um, so even if I crank this all the way up, there you go. That's about as bright as this thing is ever going to get, right there. Um, which. I guess if reflected, it's pretty decent, but look, it's pulling three amps, I mean, jeez. It's getting really hot in my hands, so let me turn this off. Here we go. Turn that down. Something reasonable. All right. Uh, here we go. Let me give you an idea. Hot, hot, hot. <laughs> I mean, you saw three amps at, at, you know, five, six volts. That, that energy's got to go somewhere, and in this case, it's produced in some light and a shitload of heat. Uh, but if we step up to something a little bit more modern, I had this thing kicking around from an old flashlight. Um, back when the, the highest state of technology for flashlights, when this was made, was uh, these um, a tungsten, these halogen bulbs like you'd see in a, a, a modern car. Um, that were being developed for flashlights, but I mean these also get really hot. But there, you get more lumens, you get more uh, uh, light production for the same amount of electricity. Uh, so uh, let's toss, let's toss this in. Around. There you go. Oh yeah, look, I mean, that's facing you. It's probably 
blowing out the camera there. Uh, very, very bright, even with the lights on in here. And if you can see, I don't know if it's in, sh in a shot. Yeah, it's only pulling 1.3 amps and holding steady on the voltage. I mean, it's, it's getting warm, so that one amp's got to go somewhere, but um, super bright. So I'm hoping that this can tolerate the AC voltages that you would see uh, on the on the scooter. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that because it's got an actual metal filament and it doesn't, this bulb is kind of a dumb load. It doesn't give a crap whether or not it's DC or AC, really, um, and, or, or not just a DC or AC, but whether or not the voltage is a negative voltage or a positive voltage. I think that that swing would still produce quite a bit of light from this. So I'm going to give it a try. Um, I'm going to fashion it. I'm going to fashion it in here somehow, maybe modify the original holder uh, to uh, hold this in the center. Of course, it won't be reflecting on the bouncing off of the backside much, um, but I think it'll still produce quite a bit of light. Um, actually, now that I mention that, or <laughs> now that I think about it, that might need some adjusting so that we're not pointing it up and out. So it might take some fiddling with. I'm going to do my best to just sort of keep it centered in here. I think that'll probably get me in the ballpark. Uh, but outside of that, just some testing what to do. So um, I'll probably cut away to me futzing with the uh, what I end up coming to as a solution for getting that into there. I just burned out that bulb. <laughs> and I set to 12 volts because there's a little 12 volt fan here keeping me cool in the garage. And I forgot I had it on 12 volts and I popped it. <sighs> Alright. Uh, plan B, I guess. Get a different bulb. Um, is it actually burned out? Let's find out. Quick way to check. Check for the resistance across that bulb. A good bulb. Looks like that. And a bad bulb. Looks like that. <laughs> All right, so luckily, in my garage, I had another bulb that is very similarly shaped. And around, and this one's labeled as a xenon, which I think is a brand name, or it's a type of gas actually. Um, and it's labeled as 14 volts, so maybe that'll keep me from uh, getting <laughs> into trouble like that. And actually, now that I think about it, four, I was hoping that that one was going to be really robust. Um, and could handle, you know, lots of different voltages because, um, the scooter is definitely going to be, uh, kicking out some weird stuff, um, dirty AC voltages, and 
if it popped at 12, it was probably going to pop in the bike. And actually, that might have saved me from doing all that work. And then it pops, like, you know, first time out. So um, I'm going to take a stab at getting this guy fabbed up in here. Yeah, we'll give it a go. First, I know some of you might be thinking, I'm not gonna, that little wire gonna block some light, and yes, it will, but um, it won't be noticeable to, <laughs> to the human eye. Um, so I can do that, and then here I'm sliding on a insulator to give me a, a barrier. See, this, this positive one kind of comes up and over that spring, and it makes me nervous. So I'm gonna put this guy on here. There we go. That's very nice. Ooh. <laughs> I can feel the heat on my hand. As soon as that comes on, it actually burns there. That's, that's throwing out quite a bit of light. I mean, it also means it's focused. It's radiating out pretty nice. Let's see, what is the current on that? One amp at 13 volts. Not bad. Pretty bright. Definitely brighter than the piece of crap that was in there, so um, I think it's a good candidate. Let's uh, throw it in the bike and see what it looks like. It's going to require a little bit of rewiring. Originally it had the ground in here and then high beam, low beam. Um, it's now, this is now ground. But the, 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 the original ground is sort of still touch, touching the chassis of that thing, so I don't trust putting it back there. So we connect it to what is now the center pin here. It folds this over. All right, so I don't know which one is the high beam and the low beam. Before I took this all apart. Um, but they're both the same gauge. So There's probably just one or the other. So I'll know more when we start it up. Check it. Now, I'm, I don't want to put this other... Let's say that that's the low beam and this is the high beam. I don't want to put it here because it'll possibly short out to ground because of the other, the, that center one touches the outer rim here, that bulb. So I'm gonna stow it away here, which looks like there used to be a, maybe a running light of some kind installed in here, um, which I should, I'll revisit it later. I didn't realize that that existed. Um, actually, even if it did, wait a minute, even if it did, it did, there was no place for it to poke through the bulb or the reflector, so maybe some uh, like a drilling a hole in that reflector would let that thing shine through, and I could put like a little LED here or a smaller bulb as a running light, or just have this thing be on all the time. I don't know. Um, so let's move this screw. Here, it's a good place to stow this away. You don't want to have this thing banging around loose in here. You want to have it secured somewhere. If, the, if that wasn't there, I would have put some shrink shrink wrap on or some shrink tube on it. All right, let's go get the bulb and reinstall. Or oh shoot, at least it was ground. <laughs> okay. There's a chance that that's electrically connected through like chrome or something to this outer rim. So I'm going to switch those two wires there. Actually make it uh, chassis ground. I mean, if that's, if, if that's ground and that's hot, or you know, uh, negative and positive, you'd hate for the positive line to feed back into that system. Probably unlikely that this thing has a uh, 
this thing being the scooter, has like a fuse box hiding somewhere. I seriously doubt it. No, so that could be very bad. <laughs> There's not a lot of things to, to protect on this on the spike. Um, so it's not like having a fuse would be you know would be completely necessary back then. If you got it wrong, you just broke parts. You have to buy new parts. There you go. Now, of course, we'll we'll be won't be running it tonight. The scooter's gonna be kind of loud. Um, it's like midnight here, <laughs> so I'll wait till tomorrow. Run it, take a look at it during the day, just to make sure that it's not gonna pop or do anything weird, uh, or you know, pop as it burn out the the bulb, and then run it at night sometime and see how. It throws light out and see if it's adjusted properly and if it can hold up to high revs on it. Um, so I might include either some footage or um, a photo of what this looks like. I, of course, I didn't take it before. Before would have been nice. <laughs> but you saw it on the bench. It was really dim and antiquated and old. Um, I'm confident that either this bulb or something like it will be a lot safer and a lot brighter. Um, so, um, I'll try and include a, a picture or a video of that at the end of this one. And, um, if you've got an old Vespa, uh, something from the 60s or 70s, there's a good chance you've got the same type of, uh, uh, setup up here. And these things are pretty easy to, to upgrade and keep them safe and, uh, make sure that you're seen on the road. Uh, it being white helps a lot, but, uh, having a nice set of headlights... Um, really helps other drivers see you when you're on the road putting around town. So uh, consider upgrading your scooter's uh, lights if you have the chance. Thanks again for uh, joining me on one of Julian's random projects. Uh, subscribe or check out some of the other videos that I've got on the channel. And we'll see you next time. I'm reach down here and put the choke on. smoke and a failure <laughs> uh, back to the drawing board though I guess I didn't do so hot um, no telling what I threw it at or threw at it uh, we'll have to put a scope on it and see or a um, multimeter at a minimum now my garage smells like gas <laughs>